Hi guys, I don't know if you know, but for the past year since September, I have been studying English literature at A level. I'm in my first year, which is the AS year. If you're not from the UK, then that basically means that I'm in the first year of a two year course, but the first part of that does not count. But I still sit an exam, which is in a few weeks. So I really just wanted a record of what I'd done in this year, the books I'd read and things like that. And I also thought it would be interesting because there's hardly any videos like this on YouTube. When I first started the course I was really looking for some and I could hardly find any and I definitely couldn't find any that were up to date so I thought that it would be good to talk about what it's like to study English literature at A level and next year I'll probably do an update where I talk about all the books I read in my second year but this is my first year it's my AS text and yes that's basically all you need to know. I'm doing the AQA English Literature A specification which you can look on the specification if you want. These are the texts that I study but it does change from college to college or sixth form or wherever you go. The texts are very different but what you've got to do for each one is similar. So at AS level there are two different papers that you have to sit which cover different texts so I'm going to go through them paper by paper starting with paper one which is the Shakespeare and Poetry paper. The Shakespeare text that I study is Othello. We use the Wordsworth Classics edition, which I don't know if they're the best editions. They're pretty cheap, which is why we use them. But there are good notes and things in them. This, if you don't know, is about a man called Othello and a girl called Desdemona. Othello and Desdemona get married in secret. She disobeys her father because Othello is one black and two old. And that, in Venetian society, is pretty frowned upon. And Desdemona's father is not happy. Happy. Othello is a war general so eventually his work leads him away from Venice and they go abroad to fight in one of these wars and Desdemona goes with him. But what causes the major events of the plot is that a man called Iago is overlooked for a really important job and Othello gives it to a man called Cassio and Iago is not happy about this. He also suspects Othello of sleeping with his wife Amelia so he creates this huge plot to cause Desdemona and Othello to fall out and it's all about jealousy and lies and deception and it's great. It's a tragedy so you can kind of guess how it ends but it's a really interesting text to study. It's got lots of different depths to it and I really enjoy studying Othello. For this section of the exam paper you get an extract from Othello and it will probably be just one scene from a certain act and then you have to talk about the, how the love is presented in that extract and then the second part of that question will give you a specific thing that you have to debate and this could be for example talking about the role of Amelia and Desdemona as wives which was a previous exam question and then you have to talk about that within the whole play but you don't get the text for this one. You have to memorise quotes but I wouldn't say it's as hard as GCSC because you get some of the text in front of you so although you have to memorise some of the quotations you also do get some of the text in front of you which is a massive help and that does mean that for this section of the paper you can paraphrase a little they're not expecting really really close analysis you just have to talk about it and you have to have a general view of the context and things like that there is a much greater emphasis placed on context at a level than it was at GCC and also your analysis has to be a lot better and you have to reference certain things and certain tropes and certain techniques within the text and then for the other half of the paper we get given a poetry anthology this is made up of poems pre-1900 and post 1900 so you do get a choice between which one you do there'll be two questions one pre-1900 and one post-1900 and you have to answer just one of those but for me at my college I do the post-1900 I don't even bother with the pre-1900 so then it's just one set of poems that you have to remember and the context can be quite similar I like most of the poems some of them are a bit annoying some of them I don't like as much but they're all pretty good the only problem I have with this specification and I think it's quite a major problem really with the whole exam system is that for a course called Love Through the Ages all the love poetry in here is straight most of the authors are white and it is a certain kind of love that is presented and if there is some kind of different atypical love it's basically white feminist love. I really just don't like it it's a real pain to think oh love poetry it's all great but it's all straight 
and I just, I really don't like it. I don't agree with it. I wish there were different poems on that and I wish that the majority of poets weren't male. I really think it's disgusting and I think it needs to be addressed. My favourite poem from here is probably After Lunch by Wendy Cope. Well that did come up last year so it's probably not going to come up this year which I'm quite upset about because I really love the poem. I also like one called Timer by Toni Harrison. It's really good and I really like Anne Sexton's poetry because it reminds me of Sylvia Plath. I think they actually knew each other. I think they might have even gone to university university together which is really interesting I quite enjoy that poetry time because it was a really interesting style. We also have two Philip Larkin poems which I don't hate but they aren't my favourite but they're still quite interesting to analyse. So I don't love Philip Larkin but I can deal with him if I have to. So at this point in the year I definitely know which ones I do want to come up and which ones I do not want to come up in the exam. But next year I don't have to worry about this. The next year we do unseen poetry instead so we just get given a random poem and have to analyse that. So this part is just part of the AS course. It does change a bit next year but but on the whole we keep a lot of our texts. And then for the second exam paper we have to do something very different. This is the unseen prose part. So the first question we get is we get given an extract from a random text and we have to talk about a certain type of love presented in it which will get given to us and you have to kind of debate it. I've really enjoyed learning about this. We got to do extracts from Jane Austen and Thomas Hardy which I was in my element for. I loved it. I'm kind of nervous about what will come up in the exam because you just don't know when it will be. If it's a piece of Victorian literature I think I'll be fine but if it's something a bit more recent then I don't know if I'll be as happy with it because I love Victorian literature I could talk about it all day when it comes to something a bit more recent I don't like it as much for example last year's paper was on Brooklyn by Kong Tobin I don't know how to pronounce his name but I didn't like it at all I didn't really like the extract it was not my favorite so it really does depend on the day and what kind of text you get and then the other half of the paper is dedicated to comparative literature so you get given two texts and you get given a random question that could be on anything but this time you get two so you can choose between which question you do and you have to compare the two books. So my books are Test the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy and The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I think The Great Gatsby is quite a popular text. I think that's what a lot of schools or colleges choose to do. It just seems like one everybody I talk to seems to study. And then I'm not really sure about Test the Durbervilles. I don't really know anyone else doing it but I really really love this book. I love Thomas Hardy he is one of my favourite authors as it is and actually Tess the Durbervilles was the first book I read of his. I really love it. It's really interesting to talk about. It's a big book so there is a lot to talk about within it too or I actually find it harder to talk about The Great Gatsby because it's quite a short book. You have to kind of choose very specific things whereas in Tess there are quite a few scenes that are the same so you can choose which one you talk about. In the exam you actually get given your copies so it's open book, you can copy from the text, you get quotations so you don't have to memorise it you do have to know them very well however so I'm going to read these immediately before the exam. The Great Gatsby is the one I'm not as confident on, I don't enjoy it as much. I still like it, it's still a really good book but I just don't enjoy it as much as I do about Tess the Durbervilles. I'm really passionate about Tess the Durbervilles and I love Thomas Hardy's books so that is just why I love it. Tess the Durbervilles is one of the more gloomier of Thomas Hardy's novels and it's about a young girl called Tess whose father tells them that they're related to the rich and fancy old Durbervilles. So one day her mother sends Tess out to claim kinship and this is really where Tess's whole life goes wrong. It is a tragedy really and it's a really sad book but it's also really interesting too. I think pretty much everyone knows what The Great Gatsby is about but it's about a man called Jay Gatsby. He's very secretive and he has all these lavish parties and it's narrated by a man called Nick. I'm still convinced that there's something going on between Nick and Gatsby to be honest. I am all for the Nick and Gatsby ship. I love them both. It's a really interesting book all about new money and old money in the time after the First World War where everything was lavish and excessive. It makes me feel a bit sick to be honest but it's still a really interesting book and actually it's really easy to compare them both although I say that now but when I get to the exam I'll probably be like no I hate this but I really like them both. I do find Tess easier though than Gatsby but that's just personal preference. Some people find Gatsby a lot easier. I think it really does just depend. I've really really enjoyed studying English literature. It's what I want to do at university so I am hoping for a good grade. I will keep my fingers crossed 
and please wish me luck because I think I might need it. I would love to do more videos on English literature if it's something that would interest you. If you have any questions then leave them in the comments and if I have enough I can always do a QA. and a I find it really interesting because there will be some of you that are trying to decide if you want to study it next year. I found these videos super helpful when I was choosing to study it and wanted to know a bit more about the course and it's also quite a new course so there's not a lot of information out there but I'd love to share as much knowledge as I can because it is a really good course I would highly recommend it. You do need to be dedicated, you need to read the text because it's going to help you. There are still people I know that haven't read them yet and just rely on watching the DVDs and for me immersing myself in the text as much as I can really helped. I just really love the course and yeah if you have any questions leave them in the comments and I will try and answer them or if there's any specific things you want me to talk about in a future video let me know. I really want to help as many of you as I can because English literature is a really good course to do. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!